Hello and welcome everyone. I am Benson Nagy and I'm an application engineer at Gamax Laboratory Solutions with focus on model-based design and simulation. And the goal of our today's presentation is to focus on the design and simulation of microgrid systems. So we will start with an introduction on the microgrids. We will show how they are different from the traditional utility system and how you can choose the right level of simulation for your short and long-term simulation of microgrids. For this, I will show you two examples. First, a system level model of a microgrid. Then we will continue with an example of a detailed model of a grid connected photovoltaic array simulation. If we want to talk about microgrids, it is inevitable to talk about conventional grids first. So in a conventional grid, we have a unidirectional grid in which power generates at one end of the system, and then it is transmitted to the areas which require the power. After the long transmission line, it is then distributed to each specific customer and we are using a distribution transformer to lower down the voltage at consumer level. From this, we can conclude that connecting new sources of power generation would be difficult for conventional grids, and this brings us to the introduction of microgrid systems. Because microgrids are different from the conventional grids. In a microgrid, we have a localized generation of electric power via solar panels, for example, or we can have other renewable systems. We can also have a backup generation system or energy storages such as batteries, for example. From this, we can conclude that microgrids are bidirectional. It is also important to note that microgrids can be either connected to the main utility grid, or some microgrids can even operate as an off-the-grid system. From this, we can see that microgrid design brings different challenges, and we need different approaches to designing such a system. With the model-based design approach and simulink, we can evaluate our design and control in the development phase and thus shorten the development cycle and also save capacity and resources. In the next slides, we will focus on two models and show you how you can start building and designing your microgrid systems. First, we are going to simulate the behavior of a simplified model of a small-scale microgrid during 24 hours on a typical day. The model you see underneath is a single-phase AC network. Energy sources are an electricity network, then we have a power generation system and a storage battery. On the other hand, the electric loads are represented by the three houses that are connected to the grid. In our simulation, we will aim to validate our component sizing, and we will also want to see how dependent are we of the utility grid. Now, let us take a look at the properties of each major component of our model. The solar power system gradually ramps up during the day and peaks between 2 and 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and then it ramps down. We have no power generated during the night. The battery has a 1000 ampere hour capacity, and it is controlled by a battery controller. It supplies the insufficient current when the power of the microgrid is insufficient, and absorbs surplus current from the microgrid when its power surpasses the electric load. The loads of the houses are attempting to represent a typical consumption of ordinary households. So we have one consumption in the morning, and then we have two extra consumption peaks during the night. Finally, the microgrid array is connected to the power network via a transformer, which lowers the voltage of 6 kW to 200 volts AC. Let's open the model now and see how our model looks like in Simulink. Once we open up the model, you can see that we have the same architecture that we had in the presentation. We have our solar panels, the battery model, and the three houses that are, are representing our loads. You can also notice some extra blocks, the battery controller and the battery dynamics model, for example. But one really important thing to mention is the partial shading of our solar panels. Because at 11 a.m., we are modeling a partial shading phenomenon of the solar panels, and we are using a signal disturbance block for this. This shading lasts for 30 minutes, and we will see the effect of this in the simulation results later. But before we run the simulation, please also notice that we are simulating 24 hours of operation time in our microgrid systems. And once I click on the run button, you can see that it runs in a matter of seconds. So from this, we can conclude that our model runs really, really fast. This is because we have a low fidelity system level model now, and with this, we can obtain our results really quickly. Speaking of the results, let's explore them together now. In the results, we have a figure with three subplots. First, we have a consumption power of the households, and then on the middle plot, you can see the PV generated power that is highlighted with rose color, and the battery power highlighted with blue. 
and the last plots show the battery state of charge. The first point, important point of the simulation is the morning peak. We can see that during the morning peak, the consumption of the households are bigger than the generated power of the solar panels, so we are using the battery to cover the power needs of the households. Another important part is the partial shading. As we mentioned earlier, the solar panels undergo a partial shading at 11 am, and we see the effect of this in the results. Because of this shading, the power of the solar panels drop back, and we need the batteries again to cover the needs of the household. And as the shading is gone, you can see that in the afternoon hours, the solar panel generates surplus power, and we use this extra power to charge our battery. And later, during the night consumption peak, we are using the power stored in the battery to cover the household needs again. So from these results, we can conclude that our component sizing was appropriate, and we are able to cover the power needs of the household during a typical day. And before the simulation, we also mentioned that we want to see how dependent we are on the utility grid. You can see on the last plot here that we need the utility power only when the solar panel shading occurs. So here you can see that the utility grid uh, is needed only for a limited time, but we couldn't cover the shading without the utility grid. So to conclude everything, we could see that we had a really fast simulation uh, with our system level model, which included system level uh, details, and it was really appropriate for component sizing, we could see that we were able to, um, to cover the power needs of the three houses, but we couldn't exist without the utility power. And this model and simulation provided brief information for us, but it doesn't include specific component details, and for this we have to dig deeper in our models, and this leads, to us, uh, leads us to the next example, which is the detailed model of a grid-connected PV array. And this example shows an average model of a photovoltaic array that is connected to a 25 kilowatt grid via a DC-DC boost converter and a voltage source converter. With this simulation, we will aim to control the duty cycle of the boost converter, and we will you want to do it in a way so we have maximum output power from the PV array. The main components are the PV array delivering a maximum of 100 kilowatt power, and that is highlighted with green on the slide. Then we have a DC-DC boost converter with a maximum power point tracking algorithm. And we have a voltage source converter and a three-phase coupling transformer that connects the PV array to the utility grid. Let's explore it in the model itself. In our model, we can see the same architecture that we had on the slide. We have the PV system, the DC-DC boost converter with the implemented control, and the utility grid. For the PV array, we are using the PV array block from the Simscape Electrical. And for the input, we are defining the irradiance level for the operation time. You can see the details of the input here. Now let us explore the boost converter and the MPPT controller in more details. We are using an average model boost converter, and we are using the MPPT to control the duty cycle. The control algorithm is implemented using a MATLAB function block, and it is reacting to the input parameters, which are the PV voltage and current, and some additional parameters for the duty cycle. We are enabling the MPPT control after 0.3 seconds, and we are using a step block for this. You can see that now, next to our PV array system, we have a control algorithm that we are using to maximize the power output of the system. So we are modeling deeper details of the components, and now we have a medium fidelity model. Please also notice that we are simulating three seconds of operation only now. And if I click the run button, you can see that the simulation is running a bit slower than real time. But now let's explore how our MPPT controller works in those three seconds of operation. In the results, you can see three plots on the figure. First, we have the sunny radiance, which is the input of our simulation. Then we have the output power of the PV array. And in the end, we have the duty cycle of the boost converter, which is marked with blue, and the MPPT control signal that is highlighted with rows. You can see that in the first 0.3 seconds, we have no MPPT controlling the boost converter, and the duty cycle is fixed at the value of 0.5. The corresponding output power of the PV array is 96 kilowatts here. But once we enable our MPPT control, we can experience the control of the duty cycle, 
And we can see that we are able to raise the output power of the PV array to 100.7 kilowatts. This is more than a 4% of gain, which is significant if we consider the fact that we are able to reach this only with an efficient control of our boost converter. In our simulation, we are considering a change of the irradiance between 0.5 and 2 seconds. Let's examine how it affects our output power. You can see that as the irradiance starts to drop at 0.5 seconds, the output power drops linearly as well, and we have a constant duty cycle here. And also when the irradiance rises between 1.5 and, and 2 seconds, we are struggling with the control again, but once the irradiance stabilizes at 1000 watts per square meter, we are efficiently controlling our duty cycle. So we can see that with our MPPT control, we are having problems when the irradiance changes, but we are controlling the output power efficiently for constant irradiance levels. And to conclude this example, I would like to highlight that now we had a medium fidelity model, which was sufficient for detailed simulation results, and it was appropriate for control design and component validation, and we could use this model for many much more things. On the other hand, it comes with slower simulation times, which we have to keep in mind when choosing such details of the system. To conclude this session on microgrid design and simulation, I would like to highlight that we showed uh, two models for you today. First, a system level model of a small scale microgrid, which was a low fidelity model, but comes with really fast simulation times and is appropriate for system level model applications. And then we uh, continued with a detailed model of a grid connected PV array, which was a medium fidelity model. It comes with moderate simulation times, but can be used for control design and component validations. So with this, I would like to encourage you to start using MATLAB and Simulink for your microgrid applications. I would like to thank you for your attention and joining this session. I hope you find something useful and I would like to open up the Q&A session. And that was microgrid design and simulation in Simulink with Ben Sedant. Ben is right here with me in the studio. If you have any questions, now it's time to put them in the chat in the right side of your screen. Hi, Bente. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, that was a very insightful presentation. I know you also prepared the poll. Do you mind if you start with that? Yeah, let's start with the poll then. Okay, great. So can we launch a poll? Now on the right side of your screen, you can see a poll button. If you click on it, it will open a poll window. So submit your answers and let us know what you think. Meanwhile, I do have a question for you. Okay. How promising microgrid solution really mm -hmm. is? So actually we are seeing a trend that the whole energy section is, is changing. So mm -hmm. it's undergoing huge stages, changes actually this year as well. And uh, bringing new sources of electricity next to the main power lines that we see mm -hmm. on the ground. So yeah, it's becoming more and more and it brings challenges and microgrid is a solution for this. Okay. And um, in your opinion, is there, can it really resolve this whole huge challenge of storage that we have? I mean, yeah, with actually with microgrid, we need we can have uh, smart storages where mm -hmm. we use uh, the energy that is stored in our batteries or we can also connect our cars to the grid and we, we can, uh, with, with uh, smart controls, mm -hmm. we can uh, use the current as in the way that we want and as efficiently as we can. Okay. So, yeah, it's promising. And um, I'm not really sure is it related but i heard that a lot of people are concerned because of the way if we create storages that it's really hard to manage them and uh, so and microgrid is something that you have to get public on your side and uh, is it true is it how public should be involved when we're talking about microgrid design so actually with solar panels on the top of your roof uh, mm -hmm. basically you can it's already a microgrid so basically okay. you are in the public you are a person who can add uh, to the sustainability and so on. So that's really cool in my point of view. Okay, thank you so much yeah. for answering. Thank and you. the poll answer coming in, I think we can close yeah. the poll. What do you think? Shall we close it? Yeah, I think we can. Okay, fine. so what do you think on the answers? Yeah, actually, the answers are the, those answers that I really expected. So right. we see that the energy management system is becoming more and more important mm -hmm. and also like the energy storage like batteries are important as well 
but uh, maybe one surprise here is dig about digitalization because it is it is getting more uh, attention but it seems that now we have nobody in the in the crowd but with the energy management system I, I really like that it's it's gay it's big okay great yeah. we have a lot of questions for okay. you. <laughs> let's go for them okay so which toolbox software models are used in this example that you were talking about yeah so basically those both of those examples are using simscape and mm -hmm. simscape electrical mm -hmm. so i think that was the main uh main uh, source of uh, inspiration for me mm -hmm. and that's what i would like to highlight so of course we have matlab and simulink but we are not using really special toolboxes here okay uh, next question. Yeah. Did you also model the high voltage transformer on your model with the MPPT? So basically like only the MPPT was modeled. Uh, as you could see, like the PV array was a uh, prepared blocks from Simscape Electrical. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, really cool because you have a huge database that you can use. Mm -hmm. And also like uh, the high voltage transformer was provided. Mm -hmm. So I focused on the MPPT and, and that part of the model. Okay. Next question. So it's a long one. <laughs> okay. In the system level model, during the mm -hmm. first day level simulation, on the end of the simulation, we had, they had 60% battery remaining, okay. which is 20% less than what they started with. Does this mean that they couldn't exit the battery for a week of operation? Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. That's mm -hmm. a tough one. Okay, so basically, yeah, you could see that we started with 80% of battery charge with the first example. Mm -hmm. And then in the end of the first day, we had 60% uh, remaining. Mm -hmm. So that means that we, during the one day of operation, uh, we, lose, we lost 20% of battery uh, storage. Mm -hmm. And this, yeah, this shows that we couldn't exist for seven days, for example, on this mm -hmm. uh, battery system itself. But with our battery controller, mm -hmm. we are connected the, to the utility grid. So in case we run out of battery power, mm -hmm. then we can use the utility power and then we can uh, charge the batteries again. Mm -hmm. So we, we still rely on the utility power there. And uh, can we use microgrid without relying on them? Yeah, so basically that's, that's also a good question. So we can either uh, work with uh, like an on the grid system, mm -hmm. but we can also go off the grid to a solution of the off the grid systems. And then we, 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 we will need to have bigger batteries, for example, in this case, or uh, more powerful uh, PV arrays mm -hmm. and so on. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I do have one more question, but okay. we're kind of running out of time, so it's like very yeah, short one, it and quick. it's from my side. But how long would it take, for example, if someone would like to work mm -hmm. in the field and start doing that? How long would it take to actually understand yeah. what is what? <laughs> so basically, like uh, with the examples I've shown, those are public uh, examples. I modified them, of course, but those are available publicly on the Metworks website. Mm -hmm. And so everybody can uh, just start with this. Mm -hmm. And in a matter of weeks, you can be on a really good level. Really? In my words. Yeah, I would say. Okay. This promising because yeah, previously we were talking about console and it's like, well, you start from the mat and then two and a half years yeah. you can be a confident I mean, user. That's like a yeah, few months. It's, uh, it's very good. Yeah, of course, you need to have some background of it, but yeah, yeah you can build the knowledge really fast. 